Hello, my name is Gene Torres. I'm a solutions engineer with Zerto, a Hewlett Packard enterprise company, and today I'll be providing you with a quick recap of the Zerto platform before jumping into a live demo of the solution and how it can be used in a disaster recovery scenario. So let's get to it. First and foremost, everything that Zerto does is based on a foundation of continuous data protection that is achieved with near synchronous replication, which means that once you protect your workloads with Zerto, that protection is always on and is non-disruptive. Because replication is only one part of the protection solution and you're going to need to be able to actually test and recover your workloads, the platform also includes the orchestration and automation required to make protection and recovery simple and repeatable, bringing you better outcomes when it comes to disaster recovery, ransomware resilience, and multi-cloud mobility. Part of the simplicity when it comes to recovery also lends a hand to the fact that Zerto can protect your workloads as a single entity, meaning every VM that makes up a particular application can be protected together, giving you the ability to recover each and every one of those to a specific point in time where they will have disk consistency and write order fidelity down to the second, eliminating any additional work required to properly align your data when, you, when it comes time to recovery. And with that, let's jump into the demo. Okay, here we go. So, um, so to kick things off, let's first of all get a lay of the land. Uh, this is my lab here, and I have two V centers. I have one that's based in Arizona, and, which is my production V center, and then I have one that's based in Virginia, which is my disaster recovery V center. Um, if we look at each one, you'll see that there is a ZVM, which is our Zerto Virtual Manager. This is the control plane for Zerto. Uh, provides you with the user interface, the database for Zerto, as well as the APIs to, to run any kind of programmatic access to it. And the VRAs are the virtual replication appliances, which are basically the data movers of the solution. And they are responsible for monitoring block changes on the VMs that are being protected, compressing them and replicating them to the target site, which in this case is Virginia, uh, where they will reside in the journal uh, for up to 30 days. Now, if we take a look at the Zerto interface itself, um, I've got two tabs here. I've got one for Arizona and one for Virginia. Why do I have two? Great question. Um, that is because if I were to lose my entire production site, um, I'd still be able to recover by logging into the Virginia user interface. And you'll see in a second here that these two are pretty identical. Um, so what we're going to see here first on the dashboard is basically an overall VPG health or virtual protection group health, uh, which is an, an interactive heat map. Um, as you scale out, these boxes will get smaller um, and they will change colors according to, according to this decoder ring here um, to tell you what their status is. If I need to zoom into any one of these by, uh, for any reason, I can just click here and be taken directly into it. Um, as you can see here, I've got two virtual machines I'm protecting as part of this virtual protection group. And then if I look at sites, it's telling me that I've got two sites connected and I'm protect, protecting from production to my DR site. Now, jumping down to the virtual protection groups tab, I have you can, again. You'll see my virtual protection groups here. Virtual protection groups, if you remember, are those groups of VMs that make up the application that we protect as one entity. And if we jump into the virtual protection group settings, I can walk you through what it looks like to create protection and predefine the settings for recovery, so that when it comes time to recover, we quickly re uh, bring those systems up in the order specified on the networks, on the hosts, etc. Uh, making it completely automated for you. So first thing we do when we create a virtual protection group is we give it a name and we set a priority. After we do that, we go to the next screen and we choose our, our VMs that make our application. In this case, I've already pre-selected AZ App 01 and AZ App 02, moved them into the selected VMs box, and then I'm gonna hit next. On this replication tab, I'm setting up my recovery site. So this is where I identify the target destination, which is my DR site. Um, if I'm connected to clouds, those clouds will show up in the list as well that I can, I can select. Um, and then I'm choosing my default recovery servers. So from a host level, I can choose either a cluster, a host, or a resource pool. A lot of options there. And the same thing goes for storage. If I have local storage, shared data stores, or a storage cluster, they will appear here as well. I'm going to go ahead and choose shared storage for my destination, and then I have my cluster selected. Now, when I go down to the SLA section, uh, by default, we're going to get one day of journal checkpoints. 
Um, to give you an idea of how many checkpoints we get within a 24 hour period, it's, it's anywhere between 15 and 1600 checkpoints, which means you can go back to any one of those points in time within 24 hours. Very granular. After that, we're gonna set our target RPO alerts. Should Zerto ever violate that SLA, we're gonna get alerted. The dashboard's gonna light up like a Christmas tree and we'll be in our investigation to find out what's going on. Now, if, if the app team says I have to do testing every one, three, six, nine, or 12 months, I can also set a test reminder here so when that time comes, um, we can go ahead and start a, a failover test and get their reports for their records. On this tab, we're going to see all the disks that are associated with all the VMs. And then here is where we're starting to see some network settings. Uh, I'm going to choose a production network to start with here. And then for my failover testing, uh, to do non-disruptive testing, we have pre-created an isolated network bubble called remote. Um, so when we run a failover test with Zerto, we're not disrupting production. We're bringing these up safely in an environment where we can get our testing done, our validation done, and then get our reports. Now, if you're wondering how do I change all the IPs on each one of my NICs, this is where we're doing it. This one here allows me to go in and specify per NIC at the VM level what I want to do with these things. Uh, for production failovers and migrations, I'm going to put them on the production network, which is my VM network. Next, it's asking me, do I want to create a new MAC address? My options are yes or no. Now, if I want to change the IP address, I have, or, or for IP settings specifically, I have three options, no, DHCP, or static, and then click OK. Same thing can be done for the testing, the non-disruptive testing uh, networks. Uh, we'll go next, and we're going to get our summary page, which just kind of summarizes everything that we've previously chosen on the, the previous screens in one place. If we're happy with what we like or what we've got here, I click done. Uh, in this case, it's already created, so I'm going to cancel out of here. Now, what I'm going to do here is what we came to do. I'm going to simulate a disruption to my production application, and we're going to show you how quickly and easy it is to recover from that. So in order to actually cause a disruption, let's power off these servers. And once they are powered off, I am going to delete them. And I'm going to delete them from disk. So we all know in VMware that if I delete disks, they're gone. I can't, I can't get them from anywhere but my backups or my disaster recovery solution. In this case, it's zero. There's the problem. And if we go into Zerto, what we're going to notice is this virtual protection group has turned red uh, with an error message. Go into vCenter. Help desk is calling. What's happening here? We need this server back up. So as a sysadmin that's in charge of Zerto, uh, my step here is to go and recover. So what I'll do is I'll go to my Virginia Zerto user interface. I'll go to virtual protection groups. I'm going to select this application Go to failover and select live. Application selected. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to choose a checkpoint. Um, we have an auto commit policy of 60 minutes, which gives, which gives me 60 minutes to validate that the application, when it comes up in Virginia, is good to go and can start being accessed again. And we'll start our failover. Go into the Virginia vCenter. We just saw the two AZ app servers pop up under applications. Now this is Zerto's automation and orchestration taking place. What's happening right now is Zerto has kicked off the API calls to vCenter to register the VMs according to their original settings, attach them to the VMDKs that we've replicated to the DR site, as well as that point in time in the journal. As soon as that's completed, the VMs will boot up. The VMs have been powered on. So what we'll do is we will now log into them and make sure that one, they're functional and two, they've received their new IP addresses for the Virginia DR site. And let's open a command prompt and make sure that they've received their IP address. Looks good. Now we'll go and do the same to the second server.
And we'll also verify that this server as well got its new IP address for Virginia, which looks good. Now that our application is functional, all that's left to do is go back into Zerto and commit the failover. And when we commit, Zerto's gonna ask, do you wanna reverse protect? We'll say yes, and Zerto will immediately start syncing the data back into the direction. Um, and as soon as that completes, we'll be ready to uh, plan a failback. Now, whether we're doing a live failover, a test failover, or a migration, Zero reports on everything, so we'll just go to the reports and we'll export this recovery report. And when we open it, we can we get all the details like who ran this operation, what type of operation it was, how long our RTO or recovery time objective was. In this case, it took 56 seconds for those VMs to be available. And then if we scroll down, we see a lot more detail. All those tasks that you saw happen in the vCenter um, are also logged with timestamps and success or failure. Now what we can do with this is we can email this report or save it into a repository to show that we've successfully recovered the application. And that is a Zerto disaster recovery done simply. Thank you for watching.